do with the connections. What's going on here? My trusty M50, which I have described many times as bomb-proof, is caving on me. But it's not the camera, it's the lens. If I connect the lens, there seems to be some strange noises going on. Oh. Well, if I disconnect the lens by just a tiny bit, there. We're in, we're in business, but we can't focus. So today I'm in a place I've never been before. I've always wanted to come here, but never had the opportunity. We're in the Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada, just, I guess it's just north of Las Vegas. And we're right at the end of a big long project that I've been working on with Gavin Hardcastle, Adam Gibbs, Thomas Heaton. And this is kind of our, our day off. So we're gonna go out and do what we do best. We're gonna. Well, maybe not do best, but we're gonna go out and attempt to do some photography. Look at this beautiful rock that I'm standing on. Incredibly beautiful. I saw you at the other stop and I was like, no way, no way was that Nick Page. <laughs> and then I saw your truck and I was like, holy f it was Nick Page. Man, What's my name is Mark. Mark, name's Hold on, dude. <laughs> holy shit. That's awesome. Oh my God, this is a this is awesome. So this area is absolutely beautiful. The most challenging thing is that there is, there's so much beauty, it's really hard to narrow it down. There's no obvious shots, but there is lots of leading lines that are being created from either the sunlight, you know, striking the texture in the, in the rock and the lines in the rock, but there's also lots of uh, striations in the colors of this rock. That's what drew me to this area and that's what I'm gonna try to find and utilize in my compositions. So one of the things I've talked a lot about in the past is I like to find composition handheld or just with my cell phone. And then once I find that composition, figure out a way to get my camera in that area. You know, once you put it on a tripod, it becomes slow to move compositions, easy to experiment when it's just a handheld thing. So I need to work pretty quick and frantic because the sun is quickly gonna go down below that horizon. And as soon as it does, I'm gonna lose all the definition on the, the edges of this rock. So I'm gonna try to get my tripod pretty much where I was looking handheld and like the result, which is back in here. Yeah. So compositionally, what I'm looking at here is I really like the way that the light is striking this rock down at my feet, down right here in front of me. It creates a nice kind of bottom edge for the framing of the image. And it is kind of creating this sweeping leading line back towards that prominent rock formation. I'm not sure that the background rock formation is necessarily the main star of the show because it's not the most photogenic part of the image, but it is nice to have somewhere for the eye to go. So in this shot, I'm just gonna do F16, focused about a third of the way into the frame, exposing for my highlights. I'm gonna go ahead and do a three shot bracket just so I have those highlights if I need them. I've got the sun just out of frame and I think that I like that, but I am going to also do a horizontal composition where I include the sun and get a little, little bit of stun, sun star action going on. So I'm gonna lower my tripod, get down a bit lower, Let's see what this looks like. I just really like the way that this highlight is is kind of leading the viewer's eye into the frame. From this perspective to the right, it's really kind of swooping in.
so in these situations I have to work really fast because the sun is right down on the horizon and I have this shot that I like I've shot it both at horizontally and vertically but I also want to capture this area back here behind me I really like these kind of I don't know they're like little tiny baby arches and I want to see if I can get up there while the light's still striking it I gotta hurry though <laughs> So things have finally calmed down now that the light is not changing nearly as fast. And I've been able to actually roam around and, and do prop, proper composition scouting. Earlier it was just so frantic because things were changing so fast I had to act really quickly. But now as I'm waiting for sunset I ha I've had an opportunity to kind of scout around for a composition I think I found one that I like. So what I like about this spot is we have these nice prominent interesting shapes breaking the horizon. We've got a couple spires on the right and we're looking right towards sunset. It looks like we might get some decent color in these clouds. There's not tons of them but I'm not going to be including tons of sky in this frame. The problem with this composition though is that I love the foreground more than anything else. This is one of the rare times where I wish I had more than 16 millimeters because 16 millimeters I'm, I'm cropping off some of my favorite stuff. I thought about doing a vertical composition, but all of my sky interest is going to be kind of in the center of the frame over in here. So that's not going to work because if I did a vertical composition, I'd want to have this kind of spire fairly central in the frame. So I'm going to shoot a horizontal frame, but I'm going to do a two shot vertorama. So what I mean by that is I'm actually going to start off by tilting the camera down, which is gonna give me all of this wonderful foreground. We have lots of interesting shapes and lines in this foreground. We have this nice white striation in these rocks here, which is going to help drag the eye a little further into the frame. Then I'm gonna take a second shot, tilt it up, and then I'll blend them together in Photoshop. So to shoot these, I'm gonna tilt down. I'm gonna get my Horizon fairly level. You see my green line here. I'm going to take this shot at f16. I'm going to focus on the foreground. I'm going to focus a little deeper into the frame and a little deeper into the frame. So I'm doing a focus stack here. I'm going to focus on my background. Those distance ro distant rocks there are pretty much going to be infinity shooting at 16 millimeters. Now I'm going to tip up. I'm going to keep that digital level still level and I'm going to reshoot with that same exposure. Now I'm going to darken my frame and get my sky frame for that background. I'm going to continue to shoot this as the light changes. Right now might be as good as the sunset gets but it might get a little bit more colorful. I'll just continue to shoot it. So the light is really kicking off now, so I'm gonna start by focusing on my foreground. I've tilted down. I'm gonna focus on the closest point of rock closest to the camera. Then I'm gonna focus a little bit deeper in, and a little bit deeper in. And when you're focus stacking, you really need more frames close to camera than you do far away. beautiful night. It doesn't get much cooler than getting to do landscape photography in such a interesting geological place and pretty much have it to ourselves. There's a lot of you know viewpoints where there's a whole bunch of people at this particular park but Tom and I we you know just parked at a random place around along the trail and and just kind of took off and have this place all to ourselves. It would a gorgeous place and to get decent light at the same time, it's pretty special. I'm interested to see what Tom is shooting. It's, it's 
for me it's fun to see Tom shoot in places like this because I know it's you know out of his normal normal type of photography. Adam and Gavin are in a completely different area of the park. I have no idea what they're shooting. Tom and I were really drawn to this area because of all of the different you know colors in the rock. It's really challenging when you get into other areas in this particular park because the rock is just red on red on red. This particular area looks like some kind of swirl ice cream cone. It's very, very beautiful. Pretty special night. What a beautiful way to cap off this trip I've been on. The last three weeks, myself, Thomas Heaton, Adam Gibbs, and Gavin Hardcastle, we've been filming, filming a project. And that project's not gonna be out till way later in the year, but it's probably the most ambitious thing that any of us maybe have ever done. So I'm really excited about how it's turned out. We're right on the tail end of filming it all, and it's been a good time. It's very difficult to be in confined quarters with four other men for that long. It's been three weeks, and it's not been the easiest three weeks, but I think we're still all friends. Tom, are we still friends? Uh, uh, I'm sure we will be <laughs> in a few weeks. We're going to need some time to recover, I think. It's been quite the, quite the journey. Hey, Nick, what are you vlogging with that? I've got... An A9 with a 18 millimeter prime, so. F, F what point what? 2.8. Oh, so that's nice in this low light. Yeah, it's all right. I've I'm, I'm been doing this whole video with the GoPro. Nice, and uh, you, well, your setup is way lighter. That's true, and it straps to my head, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> so it's totally hands-free. Yeah. That's, that's, that's better than this. Look at this business. So me and my audience wanted to come see how you were getting on. Yeah, good. I shot multiple compositions. I shot one towards towards the sunset, so everything was kind of backlit. But some of this white rock that we have down here, it really reflects the light really well. So it's yeah, I think that's going to work. And then I also shot one that with a little bit softer side light that I think is going right, to be just, good. Just calm down, all right? Yes, you got <laughs> lots of images. Well, done. well, I got maybe one. It's and if this video goes live on YouTube, then it means I got one. Nice. <laughs> but yeah. if it doesn't, it means I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's challenging because it's oh. so busy. But as soon as the light happened, then all of a sudden I could see compositions. It was exactly. insane. I don't know. I got quite a nice one. Uh, very happy with it. I'm just not happy with shooting with the GoPro in the dark. That's all. Right. That's that's the challenging part of trying to composition scout here is the fact that it changes changes so much from you know when the sun is up it looks one way when the sun goes down it looks completely different it's great pad my video a bit so it's longer <laughs> we've been shooting completely different things i think what have you been shooting well i've been shooting i struggled because there's so much and i've never been here before i've never really been i've been to zion and i suppose i've been to um the alabama hills which is a, i guess a similar thing but it's just chaos so I didn't think I was going to get a shot and then I went and found a nice open area with less going on and was able to really simplify a shot where I was just looking for colours and shapes. And, and I was really happy with it, especially when the sun set, the red light from the setting sun hit the clouds to the yeah. west and all of that light reflected off the clouds, bosh, down onto my scene and just lifted it. It was like someone switched the lights on only for a couple of minutes. and. Yeah, it's nice, abstract, intimate, all about the shapes and colours really. Um, yeah, I'm not really, I don't, I don't shoot wide much anymore. I, don't know, the, I find it harder and harder to find those subjects. Yeah. Um, I seem to be going like, yeah, I feel like I'm going very Adam Gibbs at the minute. <laughs> Nick Page. Well, and that's that's what's so cool about locations like this that don't have just a viewpoint you walk up to and you take that photo is, you know, people like us, we can come away with completely different images from each other. Mine is going to be very different than his and, and that's the fun of it. You know, it's fun to walk up and think, I might get something different than somebody else today and that's that's a good feeling, I think. Yeah, it's a hard 
feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. not easy. God, it's hard. Well, and the, the first half of my photo shoot was just so rushed, so rushed in a bad way. And I don't think I got any good photos until I calmed down and, and committed to a composition, which is challenging because there's so much beauty here. You think that there's gotta be more than one photo, but sometimes you just need to chill out and commit to one photo, I think. Totally, that's what I did. Yeah, and I struggle with that. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you're interested in the project we've been working f working on, you can go to f4roadtrip.com, and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.